Uh, so, t so tell me about a little bit about the work you do and, and, and uh, the work you won the award for. The area in which I operate is very broad. I'm an environmental attorney, so we do uh, file cases on environmental uh, grievances that people uh, have. We do uh, advocacy for having uh, progressive, pro-people, pro-environmental laws. We do have our public awareness uh, campaign. But the reason why I've got the award is because of the judgments that we have got in a uh, a case filed by me before the Supreme Court of Bangladesh that basically challenges the operation of the shipbreaking industry in Bangladesh. Shipbreaking, uh, I would define it as a, a trade in hazardous wastes in disguise. This uh, is basically dismantling of all the toxic ships uh, that are owned by the developed countries. Uh, but when they decide that they don't want to uh, ply their ships anymore, they will send their ships or sell their ships to countries like Bangladesh and India where they are taken on the beaches and the whole dismantling process is done manually on the beaches. So we challenge the industry on two reasons. One is that it is um, creating serious environmental uh, problem in the coastal area and secondly it is such a risky job that almost uh, one laborer dies in every two weeks. So. It has a very high uh, rate of death, and it is also giving people occupational diseases, like people are suffering from asbestosis. It is so risky, the laborers are falling from the height, dying, they're losing their uh, legs, they're losing their hands, and after working there for six, seven years, they come out and they say that we are not in a position to undertake any work anymore. So it's from the viewpoint of environment and labor safety that we challenge the industry and we say that uh, under the Basel Convention, any um, person who generates waste, it is the responsibility of that person to manage it in an environmentally friendly manner. The owners of the ships who uh, usually come from the rich countries, they just sell off their ships to countries like Bangladesh and by doing that they shift their responsibility uh, to countries like ours, this can't happen. So any ship that comes to Bangladesh must come in a pre-clean state, either by the owner or outside the territory of Bangladesh, and the court has decided um, in this line. We have also said that the ships that are there in the Greenpeace list must not enter Bangladesh. We have got um, a verdict on that from the uh, Supreme Court of Bangladesh. We also say that uh, for the shipbreaking industries to operate, they need environmental clearance. It is legally mandatory. None of the 36 shipbreaking yards have any environmental clearance. Uh, so the court has directed that all the 36 years should be shut down. But this part of the judgment has been stayed by a higher mm -hmm. court for three weeks. And the court has also directed the government to frame rules within three months to regulate the industry. And the rules will uh, take Basel Convention, the environmental laws, and the labor laws of Bangladesh as the basic premise. So it sounds like a big victory. Is, is there, for Friends of the Earth members and activists here in the U.S. that are going to be watching this video on YouTube, is, if they're, you know, they may be learning about shipbreaking for the first time, is there anything they can do, people in the U.S. can do to get involved or to, or to help out or help with the cause? Of course. U.S. is not a signatory to Basel Convention, but what is happening is some of the U.S. ships are also being sent to our uh, uh, buyers. So the U.S. ships are also ending up on the beaches of Bangladesh, and we are getting pollution from the U.S. ships also. The first thing that I would urge the U.S. environmentalists to do is to really do the advocacy with their government so that their government, in principle, takes a decision in favor of signing the Basel Convention. That's number one. Number two is there are domestic laws in uh, U.S., uh, like the Toxic Substances Act, that basically prohibits the export of PCBs outside U.S. without the permission of the EPA. And recently there has been a case on the 31st January of this year, 2009, that the EPA has fined uh, a, a buyer uh, who has actually bought a U.S. ship which was, which was contaminated with PCB and has actually sent that ship off to Bangladesh. So th for the first time that EPA has fined uh, someone for exporting a toxic ship outside USA under the Toxic Substances Act. What, the, uh, what U.S. and the other developed countries can do is when, uh, when their ships 
uh, come to the end of uh, its uh, end of their lives they should take the precaution that the owners cannot just sell it to some some person who would change the flag of the ship and take the flag of either Bahamas or Tuvalu or Mongolia and then eventually end up in Bangladesh. So US has a detailed guideline on uh, ship breaking. US should ensure that all the ships that carry US flags are dismantled here uh, in the green recycling uh, yards, uh, breaking yards that you have following the guidelines that you have. And if they are to be sent to Bangladesh, that, th that the owners of the ships take on the responsibility to pre-clean the ships before sending it to countries like ours.